Welcome back friends to today's lecture, today's session for English language for competitive exams. Um, today we are going to as I already mentioned in my last class vocabulary related to Greek mythology. Now, Greek mythology has given us innumerable words. We do not even realize that these words have their origin in the Greek mythology. The legendary, the mythical gods and goddesses and personae, personalities from Greek mythology. So, uh, the first name that comes to mind when we talk about Greek mythology is Homer, H O M E R. And from Homer, we get the adjective Homeric, which is larger than life, which is of epic proportion. So, what is epic? Epic is the lengthy, long verse or poem that has, uh, uh, that is of tremendous, of huge magnitude. So, Homer is the writer of the great epics Iliad and Odyssey, Iliad and Odyssey narrating the adventures of the Greek gods, goddesses, warriors. Yeah? So, epic proportion. So, whatever is Homeric is in today's language related to Homeric uh, proportions or large, larger than life or epic or um, of very great magnitude, huge magnitude. We hear stories about the person's Homeric tantrums. Hmm? This is uh, a Homeric attempt at preventing a catastrophe. Okay, so, an epic about the escapades and adventures of gods and heroes in the Trojan War, that is what Homer did. But then here we have to say about uh, in today's uh, uh, lingo or terms, we use it to uh, denote something which is larger than life. Next is Achilles heels. Now, Achilles, who was Achilles? Again, a Greek hero. When uh, Achilles was a child, he, his mother dipped him when he was the infant Achilles into the river Styx and made him invulnerable to any kind of weapon, except in the heel by which she held him. Therefore, the heel of Achilles is a weak spot and uh, it proved in the case of Achilles who was killed before the walls of Troy when uh, Prince Paris shot him in the heel with a poisoned arrow. So, therefore, Achilles he, he was invincible, okay, he would not have died otherwise, but the only portion of his body, the only part of his body that was vulnerable was his heels. So, the tendons of Achilles which binds the muscles of the calf to the bone of the heel, they receive the name from this myth. You should also know in quadrupeds, that is uh, animals, mammals that move on four feet, this tendon is called the hamstring. To hamstring an animal is to lame it by cutting this tendon. So, to hamstring means to weaken, to destroy the efficiency of somebody or something, to cripple. So, Achilles heels is a weak spot. French is her Achilles heel. It is very or she is very weak in uh, the French subject. Next word, Aegis. This could be spelled without an e also, Aegis. The Aegis was the mantle and shield of the god Zeus, Z E U S. This is something, some a name that all of you should be familiar with, Zeus, the supreme god in Greek mythology. So, even the king of the gods Zeus, he needed protection in his wars with the titans. So, Zeus lent the Aegis to his uh, uh, daughter Athene when she went into battle on the side of the Greeks during the 
Trojan War. Homer describes this as a sort of cloak, a mantle. It is generally associated with statues of Athene on which it appears as a short cloak covered with scales. Whether it was a shield or a cloak, it certainly had protective powers. Since on it were serpents and heads of the Gorgon, which turned men to stone if they looked at it. So, in modern usage, the meaning of aegis is a, uh, a shield or protection, and uh, it also it has been uh, extended to include sponsorship or auspices. So, look how language develops, how it evolves. So, now we say auspices. Sponsorship. I am talking about modern term in modern terms, not the Greek terms. Today, aegis is mostly used as part of the phrase, I mean, as under the aegis supporting programs, projects mostly aimed at public welfare. It can also be used in the legal context. Next word and it is a name Cassandra, Woody Allen has made a movie, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Apollo fell in love with Cassandra and um, who was the daughter of King Priam. He gave her the gift of prophecy, uh, but when she failed to carry out her promise to love him. He decreed that nobody should believe her, although she spoke the truth. So, a Cassandra is therefore a prophet, a female prophet, or a, rather a prophet of doom. Today, the name is applied to anyone who utters warnings of trouble to come, uh, whether uh, the prophecy is uh, believed or not. But Cassandra today. So, you are Cassandra means you are giving a warning about troubles to come. Um, next word is chimera. I will also write Cassandra. The chimera was a horrible monster that breathed fire. It had the head of a lion, the body of a goat and it had a serpent's tail. It also had a goat's head on its back. Now, uh, it is a fantastic combination. So, a wild dream, an impractical idea some a fantastic idea, a vain fancy is a chimera. The adjective is chimerical. Robert Louis Stevenson, the great English essayist, he wrote a, an essay called El Dorado and he says that the goals that men seek and he terms them chimeras. So, wild fancies, something that is not practical. Next word is um, hermetically sealed. Now, Hermes, he was uh, the Roman, uh, uh, it is a Roman name for Mercury. Mercury is the patron god of magic. In the middle ages, alchemy, the predecessor of uh, chemistry was known as a hermetic art. To put the hermetic seal or the seal of Hermes on a bottle uh, in the laboratory meant to twist the neck with flame and therefore, seal it airtight. So, hermetically sealed, the expression is often used figuratively to imply that a person's mind is shut against the infl infiltration of new ideas or information. So, you are hermetically sealed. 
is a very bad thing. Don't be hermetically sealed. That means you are closing out new ideas, exchange of information. Next word is hydra headed. Again, very popular term. Hydra. Hydra headed. The Hydra was a water monster, you know, Hydra, hydrogen, hydrant, hydraulics, hydrophobia. So, all these words, even dehydrate, that is where it comes from. So, where, where, that is where these words come from. So, uh, Hydra was a mo water monster, it had nine heads. Think of Indian mythology also, a monster with ten heads. So, Hercules, a, a great uh, hero. Greek hero, uh, a man with immense strength, he was ordered to kill the Hydra. Now, the Hydra had remarkable regenerative powers. As soon as Hercules would cut off a head, two new ones replaced it. Think of the film uh, Terminator the 2, second Terminator, Terminator 2 the judgment day and the more you kill the villainous uh, android, the robo, the faster he would or it would regenerate itself. So, all these ideas and plots come from the Greek mythology. Now, remember in Hydra, uh, in Hydra's case the heads could not grow back if fire was applied immediately to the cut. Hercules therefore, enlisted the aid of an assistant who cauterized the necks as Hercules severed the heads. Hydra headed means hard to eliminate or destroy. The term is applied to an evil which apparently put down in one place springs up elsewhere. In biology, the Hydra is a freshwater animal of microscopic size which has the property of its mythological namesake. If this is cut up, each part will develop into new hydra. Iridescent, iris that is the origin, was a lovely maiden who left a trail of color as she carried messages from the gods to the earth. She was the goddess of the rainbow. So, the word iris, I -R -I -S, itself may mean a flower, a part of the eye or a combination of brilliant colors. So, it was, uh, it is a beautiful name suggesting beautiful imagery. Therefore, poets were fascinated by the name. In Tennyson's lines from Locksley Hall, he uh, uses the word in the uh, verses in the way in the spring a livelier iris changes on the burnished dove and turns to thoughts of love. So, Locksley Hall and Tennyson's, Tennyson's use of the word iris is a beautiful being. Next word is Pandora's box. You open a Pandora's box and what happens? Troubles. The first woman according to Greek mythology was someone called Pandora. Milton tells us, British and uh, the English poet Milton, John Milton, uh, the poet, the writer of Paradise Lost, an epic poem and he tells us how he got, she got her name. He tells, Milton says, Pandora whom the gods endowed with all their gifts. So, Pan means all. We, when we use the word pan Indian, all Indians hmm, across India, so pan, P A N, and Dora means gifts. So, every god and goddess contributed something to make her a perfect being. Zeus, angered at mankind, sent her down to be a curse to man, not to a particular man, but to mankind. 
until she was created the earth was only inhabited by man and beast. The gods gave her a box which she was warned not to open. Unable to overcome her curiosity, she did open it one day. Trouble then came upon earth. All the ills that plague the body and mind of man flew out. Okay. Only hope remained that something, something, someday something better would come. So, opening a Pandora's box, now it has become a, a very popular, very common usage in our language. It could be anti-feminist when women do something is opening a Pandora's box, but we often say that politicians, yeah, you stir this problem, you rake up this problem and you are going to open a Pandora's box. So, it is better to let sleeping dogs lie, do not stir the issue, otherwise there will be a Pandora's box, all sorts of mud slinging will happen. A Pandora's box in other way, other words is a source of evil, a seething cauldron on which there should be a lid. This is a cauldron, cauldron is something a huge pot in which you boil something, stew something. Next word is Promethean, one of the most popular and sympathetic Greek uh, figures. Prometheus was a titan who brought the gift of fire to mankind, so that by its use man could develop his civilization. See the use of fire was very important. Like Prometheus, um, we often say the scientists of our time have wrested from nature the secret that is no longer a secret. So, Promethean has, is someone who has to make immense sacrifice in order to bring something good to mankind, larger good of mankind. We often say once again men are turning into to the symbol of Prometheus as a lesson and warning to mankind. So, Prometheus was bound to the edge of a precipice, a cliff and every day a vulture or eagle would eat off his liver that was meant to be a punishment. But then Prometheus was a, a hero. Okay, and he could bear the punishment. Next word is Antian. I advise you, if you are interested in all these words, to keep looking up these words for more um, background knowledge and an understanding and how these are used. So, Antian is having the power to renew one's strength. Antius was a wrestler, son of Poseidon, Neptune um, and earth and he was invincible as long as he was in contact with mother earth. The son of Poseidon and earth, Poseidon are also another word for Neptune. The Argonauts were heroes who sailed with Jason on the Argo in quest of the golden fleece. So, the coinage of the term astronauts or astronauts can be um, explained as like the Argonauts of antiquity. The Argonauts sailed the seas on the Argo, their swift ship. So, Antaeus a wrestler son of Poseidon and Argonauts heroes who sailed with Jason on the Argo. Now, remember the astronauts are being um, uh, for example, we can say the astronauts are propelled in a capsule towards the astra stars or outer space. The word cosmonaut became equated with astronauts. Next word is Sisyphean, it comes from the word or the name Sisyphus, S I S Y P H U S. He was a king of Corinth okay? and it is used for a task that is endless at the same time ineffective. The myth of Sisyphus. From Sisyphus, you get Sisyphean. 
a task that is arduous as well as ineffective. Next word is titan. The titans were members of um, divine beings. They descended from the primordial deities and they preceded the Olympian deities. Now, uh, the titans most famously include the first 12 children of the primordial Gaia that is mother earth and Uranus. So, Gaia and Uranus, they were giant deities. So, titans, origins of titans, giant deities. So, today when we say this is a titan, that means a giant figure, it is a very positive name. You take titanic steps towards something, gigantic steps. He is a titan in the field of science, okay? titanic stature. So, you a politician of titanic magnitude, giant, almost like a deity, god like proportions. You are paying someone a huge respect when you call him a, or her a titanic figure. Next is pantheon, P A N T H E O N. It means all the gods or, or of a people or religion, the deities of the Hindu pantheon. Today, we also call a group of famous or important people, the pantheon has come together in order for um, uh, you know, to collect um, something to uh, for a charitable cause. So, a pantheon of stars, a pantheon of musicians, so group of important people, the pantheon of the all time greats. The Beatles have joined the pantheon of all time great musicians. Next word is Argus eyed, A R G U S, someone who is very watchful, keen sighted, very observant. Remember, Argus was a mythological monster who had a hundred eyes, some of which always remained awake. Thus, Argus eyed, very observant. The principle of the college is Argus eyed. Next word is Bacchanalian. Look at the spelling, double C H A N A. Now, uh, this is characterized by drunken revelries or by ecstatic frenzies. Bacchus was the god of wine and Bacchanalia were feasts of um, revelry in his honor. So, when we say Bacchanalian festivities, we mean where people were reveling and drinking and behaving in general very widely. Next word is Calliope, C A L L I O P E. Calliope was the muse of eloquence someone who could speak beautifully. Her name meaning beautiful voice is humorously applied to this modern harsh sounding instrument Calliope. A series of stream whistles played from a keyboard stem organ. So, these are the synonyms. Next word is cornucopia. It means horns of plenty, inexhaustible reserves symbol of abundance. The infant Zeus okay, was nursed by a goat named Amalthea, one of whose horns had the power of being filled with whatever the owner desired. So, cornucopia means horns of plenty. And next word is cyclop. Cyclopean. So, cyclops were giants who erected uh, structures by piling up huge stones without cementing them. This is used to denote something which is huge, massive and it is often used to uh, uh, describe a type of early architecture. Next word is Gorgon. G O R G O N. Gorgons were three sisters, very ugly sisters. Anyone who looked at them would turn into stone. 
Medusa, one of the three Gorgon sisters, um, she was uh, um, the only one of the Gorgons who was subject to mortality. She is celebrated for her personal charms and the beauty of her hair, locks. Neptune became enamored of her and obtained her favors in uh, the temple of Minerva. Now, the violation of the sanctity of the temple provoked Minerva and she changed the beautiful locks of Medusa into serpents. So, a woman with serpent like coil hair. So, Medusa and her sisters they came into the world with snakes on their heads instead of hair. Their bodies were also covered with scales, impenetrable scales and their very looks had the power of killing or turning to stones. So, Perseus rendered his name immortal by his conquest of Medusa. He cut off her head and the blood that dropped from the wound produced the uh, innumerable serpents of a certain continent. So, the conqueror placed Medusa's head on the shield of Minerva, which was used when he went on his expedition. The head still retained the same uh, petrifying power as before and it was fatally known in the court uh, of uh, Cepheus, the king as Medusa's head. You look at it, you turn into stone. So, something very inauspicious. Medusa head is also now used to denote certain kind of texture of hair. Next word is harpy, H A R P Y, a ravenous person. The harpies were flying female monsters. So, today it has come to denote someone who is very, um, who is a ravishing, grasping, ravenous, uh, demanding per person. They snatch the food of their victims and the souls of the dead. So, that is where the word comes from, someone who are very greedy, someone who is very greedy, some people who are very greedy. Next term is Janus phased, J A N U S, that means two phased. One half is something and another half is something else. Janus. Faced, two faced. Janus was a god. His status uh, or his statues uh, rather show us with two heads facing in opposite direction. So, a person who is duplicitous, who is hypocritical, today we say Janus, you know, he is not able or not willing to give uh, or take a stand. Next word is jovial, quite common, joyous, merry making, inspiring happiness. Jovial is uh, pertain to Jupiter, persons born under it is believed, persons born under the planet Jupiter are supposed to be joyous, joyful. Okay? Ancient sculptors and poets represented Jupiter and Zeus as a smiling upon men. So, that is jovial coming from Jupiter happy. Next word is mentor, M E N T O R. We often use this often in, in academic and as well as car corporate setups. Mentor, he is my mentor. We describe a mentor as a teacher or someone who gives us counseling. We also use for athletic, uh, this word for athletic uh, coaches. Mentor, remember uh, the, the Greek me mentor was the friend of Ulysses to whom the letter entrusted the education of his son. So, mentor became the educator of Ulysses's son, so that is how we get the word. Next word is mercurial, synonyms are swift, active, quicksilver, you know having the qualities of mercury. Mercury, the messenger of the gods who flew with the aid of his winged footwear, sandals, so therefore swift and active. We say mercurial temper. Next word is myrmidons, 
look at this spelling. These are loyal followers, attendants who execute orders without question or pity or mercy, no questions asked, just shoot. Myrmidians were a tribe of warriors who followed Achilles. So, when today in today's language, if someone is a blind follower who could do anything for the sake of pleasing the leader, we call them Myrmidians, psychophant if you take it to another level. Next word is narcissism which is self-love and admiration. Narcissus was a handsome youth who fell in love with his own reflection and was chained into the flower of the same name. So, when people are too obsessed with themselves, we call them narcissistic. You harbor narcissistic tendencies, self-love, excessive self. All of us should love ourselves, which is very normal, but to be obsessed by ones are too try and people who are obsessed are looking at their own reflection, harping on their um, own glories, achievement, they are narcissistic. They want people to praise them all the time. Nemesis, N-E-M-E-S-I-S, Nemesis was the goddess of retribution, of punishment, the upholder of the moral codes. So, a nemesis in other words is an agent of retribution or punishment, okay, it is a jing. So, you are a nemesis, you, I met my nemesis there, yeah, someone who opposed me, who somehow you know brought punishment on me. There is a word called odyssey which is very common, O D Y double S E Y which means long voyage. Now, if you say I am going from here to my hometown that is not an odyssey, that is a journey, that is a common normal regular journey. Odyssey is a long voyage which it, it is often dangerous, fraught with danger, adventures. Okay? So, your odyssey, writers often use you know the process of this writing this novel, my odyssey or my journey as an as someone very accomplished, so my odyssey. But then you, you have seen ups and downs, you do not just say I sat in a train from here to my hometown and then that was an odyssey. Remember Odysseus or another word for Ulysses, he is the hero of Homer's odyssey. He took 10 years to get home from the Trojan war, meeting many strange or encountering many strange uh, creatures and as well as uh, facing lot of adventures, misadventures, perils and dangers. So, that is how you get the word. Next word is Olympian, you know the festival of games, Olympics. So, Olympian is majestic, Mount Olympus was the home of the gods, majestic is awe inspiring, uh, Olympian is majestic, awe inspiring, epic proportion. Sometimes you often use the word as like someone who is detached and aloof, but then you have to earn that detachment and aloofness. You cannot just act standoffish and call yourself Olympian. Olympian means someone who has achieved a lot and remains aloof, a person living in ivory tower. So, Olympian, but basically more commonly the usage is for majestic and awe inspiring. Next word, palladium, the word comes from palace, P A L L A S. It means safeguard, the bill of rights is the palladium of our, or the constitution is the palladium of our freedom, of our rights. So, um, from uh, the word derives from palace, P A L L A S, another term for Minerva. Her image or palladium guarded Troy, and Troy could not be taken until Ulysses had stolen the image. So, palladium was like a mascot to safeguard the city. So, 
we use the term to something a document that safeguards us. Constitution safeguards us, Bill of Rights in America safeguards its citizens. Next word is Phoenix. So, from Palladium we move on to Phoenix. Phoenix, P H O E N I X. A person or thing supposed to have died or passed into oblivion, written off basically, finished, done with. Okay, but then what happens? The person rises again. So, phoenix like ability to rise from the ashes. The phoenix was a bird living uh, uh, thousands of years ago. After being consumed in fire, it rose fresh and youthful from its own ashes. Today, we often call you know uh, this sportsman, this cricketer, he has been written off by his critics, but then he stayed a comeback, scored a century and phoenix like ability to rise again. So, a symbol of courage, determination, strength and absolute an absolute refusal to be written off. Next word is protein, not protein, but protein P R O T E A N. Protean is someone who is capable of changing shape. Proteus was the old man of the sea who could change his form and appearance at will. So, we say protean like actors, you know, someone who can, who can change his looks. Protean uh, like politician who changes his ways every day, his, his decisions, his ideologies every day. Next word is Saturnine, Saturnine. Saturn yeah, was the father of Jupiter in Greek mythology. Saturn, Saturnine, to turn the name into adjective, which is heavy, gloomy, serious. Saturn was the father of Jupiter. Saturn was jovial and his period of rule was supposed to be the golden age. The feasts celebrating his worship were gay and wild, so it meant having a wild time. However, astrology has given Saturnine uh, a gloomy aspect. For persons born under the influence of the planet Saturn are supposed to be sad and gloomy. So, Saturnine, so we often say Saturnine temperament. Next word is stentorian, very loud voiced, bellowing. A stentor was herald of the Greeks. Herald means someone who would see in Greek, in ancient times we did not have advertisements, television to uh, project or um, to announce something of importance. So, they used to have heralds who would call out or declare or shout out something of importance. So, Stentor was the herald of the Greeks. It was like having a loud, uh, a human loudspeaker. Okay, so someone in today's time, someone who speaks very loudly, with great authority, bellowing, that is Stentorian. And the next word is Stygian. Stygian is uh, derived from the river Styx, S T Y X. I re, if you remember, I was just telling you the story of Achilles. The infant Achilles was dipped into the waters of the river Styx. So, Stygian comes from there. The river Styx flowed down into the lower world. They believe that there is a world, this world, the higher world, the lower world. Spirits 
entering Hades had to cross it on a ferry. Now, Stygian means inky, very dark, gloomy and hellish. So, that is the meaning.